The slow, perhaps nature's laziest and slowest animal. These creatures have, over millions of years, evolved to lead the slowest, possibly dullest lives in the animal kingdom. Much like the common teenage boy, the sloth can sleep up to 20 hours a day. Moving from its comfortable home in the trees, only to defecate once a week. Yeah. This evolution includes the development of forelimbs, which are specifically adapted for dangling from trees and descending and ascending the trees, and occasionally dragging the sloth along the ground. Three toads sloths have, wait for it, three toes on each of its forelimbs which allow it to hang firmly in the trees without the use of its muscles, which due to poor nutrition and lack of exercise have been reduced to thin tissues. It is obvious that the sloth does not even lift. Its claws come in useful on the rare occasion that it does move along the tree line towards some tasteless, almost nutritionless, and difficult to digest leaves. It is because of this low energy diet that the sloth has become this slow, barely mobile creature. On occasion, the sloth might be lucky enough to stumble upon some berries or fruit which it can eat but it is too lazy to actively seek them out. This thing could really do with an energy drink or something. Its arms, compared to the rest of its body, are long, which allow the sloth to extend out and reach branches which otherwise might be out of its reach. This allows the sloth to move through the canopy of the rainforest with relative ease. That is, until it mistakes its own arm for a tree branch and plummets to its death on the forest floor. No, I did not make that up. They are genuinely that dopey. I mean, seriously, can you really believe that? The actual bone structure of the sloth's forearm follows the standard pentadactyl limb model present in most mammals. The sloth's arm is actually very similar to most species of primates, including the common chimpanzee and also humans. <laughs> the common chimpanzee, a species that in many ways can be compared to the free-toed sloth. Both are warm-blooded vertebrates and mammals. Both live in the trees, in the canopies of the rainforest, where they can consume fruits and berries. Both have brown hair which aids in camouflage. Neither of them have scales, or can fly, or breathe fire, thankfully. However, the chimpanzee is something of an athlete compared to the dreary branch potato that is the sloth. Chimps also have long forelimbs, with a span of about 2.5 meters, each with a five-fingered hand capable of complex, coordinated movement. This allows the chimpanzee to extend out and reach branches which may otherwise be out of its reach. The chimpanzee can then swing for the canopy with relative ease. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, unlike the sloth, chimpanzees do not generally mistake their own arms for branches. I'm not going to forget about that. The 
forearms of the sloth and chimpanzee are very similar, with a humerus which leads into the ulna and radius. However, the actual hands of each animal are one of the aspects which makes them different. The free-toed sloth with his numb-finger claws could never compete against the chimp's mighty fingers. How tragic for the slow. In evolutionary terms, the two species are very dissimilar. Common chimpanzees are members of the order's primate, whereas free-toed sloths are members of the order Palosa. However, both species are members of the class Mammalia. Both of them have the same adaptations of elongated forelimbs, with notably long humeri, radii and ulnas. Both are adapted for life in the canopies, where the ability to cling onto branches is essential. But there's an ocean between the two species. Sloths live in South America, and chimps live in Western Africa. Surely there's no way they could be related. But wait, 300 million years ago, the continent of South America was united with Western Africa as part of the supercontinent Pan-Dia. Could it be that during the continental split that occurred 100 million years ago, a group, the common ancestor between the three-toed sloth and the chimpanzee became separated on either side of the world? Could we be more closely related to the sloth than we first thought? Could sloths one day rise up and reclaim the land that humanity has taken from them? Probably not. The similarities are probably due to convergent evolution. The phenomena where two species exposed to similar environmental attributes develop similar survival features. Still though, some of us share more in common, the slow, than we'd like to admit. I've been Joe Lawson. Thank you for listening.